As a citizen, if you uh, talk, Venkat, uh, this election has been very interesting. It has a lot of uh, learning lessons, I would say, in terms of issues, in terms of following the leadership. So it's a very, very interesting election. And I would say that this election will actually be a sort of an eye-opener for the entire nation because here you have two forces one is talking about secularism one is talking about constitution one is talking about saving the democracy and on the other hand there are certain forces which are just talking about uh, uh, vikas they are talking about a vision which is 1000 years uh, from here on they are not talking about how they will address those instant problems like inflation price rise but they have answers for you uh, you know, for, for, for a period which, which you don't even know. So, you know, these are two different directions in which uh, the country is being pulled uh, pulled to right now, I would say. So, I, I think for the citizens also, it's very, very important that they use their wisdom and they vote for a particular future in which they want the country. So, I think that this election is extremely important and especially after 10 years of rule which we have seen, a lot of things were promised to us in 2014. Uh, we'll bring in a lot of vikas, uh, you know, India will, 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 boom, will boom in the world. So all that has not happened, all the promises have fallen flat, all what Prime Minister Modi said hasn't actually happened. And uh, people also have seen that this was just a big ball talk and uh, nothing on the delivery turf. So, uh, I think it's going to be a very, very keenly watched election, not only for the citizens of the country, but for the entire world who thinks that, you know, India is a Vishuguru in Modi's uh, language. India is already a world leader, which of course it is. But then, what do you have to offer to the citizens? Globally, he tries to present India as a trophy. But domestically, what is the Prime Minister of the country offering to the people? I think that is very important as a citizen, I, I, I feel. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. One of the things which we thought maybe four months before, that BJP is very good at narrative setting, and then it has this myriad of networks, like WhatsApp, Twitter, etc., and it would win the war in narrative. It's very good at mobilization. It looked like if we can't start winning the narrative war, we won't be even be able to win the mobilization war. But something has changed in the last six weeks, that the narrative game has shifted. And I think two such people, not just the political parties, the civil society, influences, and good old journalists have come back and taken the state, center stage. I would like you to reflect on that. Do you also think the same? And what has it done to the election process itself? Uh, I think you are absolutely right, Venkat. In the last four to six weeks, I think the narrative has almost shifted like a sand, I would say. And you know, there are a lot of multiplying factors to it. Of course, there was price rise. Of course, there was inflation. Uh, there was a talk about Samvidhan. There was talk about saving the democracy. But what one would, and I personally, I think, the Chandigarh mayor elections was the biggest eye-opener. Chandigarh mayor elections, after that, the entire country has seen how the democracy is 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 being uh, you know bamboozled before before everybody's eyes and uh, you can't do anything except for the courts which come at your rescue so supreme court came to the rescue people uh, of chandigarh were made to realize that what happened really where a presiding officer almost became a pawn in the hands of the ruling uh, dispensation but after that came the electoral bonds case that was another eye opener where uh, Modi government was completely exposed and the corruption, the, 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 the government which kept on saying na khaunga, na khane dunga, they have been badly exposed and all those links have been very well established. After that, then the biggest turning point I would say is the election commission and I would say in my personal opinion, election commission is the biggest story of 2024 elections. I can give it to you in writing that election commission's bias election commissions uh, the questions the way questions are being raised on the fairness and the neutrality this apparently is the biggest story much bigger than the political narrative how your election commission of india doesn't seem to be a fair constitutional body and this is something which has gone down and percolated very well within the minds of the people especially all those people who thought that no bjp can't go wrong it is prime minister narendra modi who's such a dynamic personality he has to offer so many things but here you've seen how the ruling class is trying to uh, arm twist a constitutional body as well look at the kind of pressure in which they are working they are not ready to uh, part with the voter turnout data they are not ready to part with form 17c uh, so there is and the way they argue in the court 
as if you know they are gods they are not answerable they tell the the citizens of the country that you have no right to suspect you have no right to uh, doubt so all this talk the kind of narrative which is being built inside the court and then the supreme court not saying anything much is 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 a very sad commentary i would say and this is all what is building up the narrative against bjp that bjp is a party which is fascist a uh, wooden one uh, one believe that if you see all these turning events which which i have just spoken about this goes to show that bjp is fascist bjp is dictatorial and the courts uh, i i wouldn't blame any individual judge but i'm sorry i'm i'm not mincing words but the courts have not risen the way they should have been especially in the case of evms and vv pat and also in the in the uh, form 17c case because there were a lot of hope from the vacation bench but uh, they said that you know we have to adopt a hands off approach and then they uh, they adjourned the entire case for after the vacation so this was Uh, an opportunity lost but yes now the citizens are very very vigilant i think the citizens have taken up the reins of this entire election and uh, as what i have been speaking to a lot of activists and they have been saying that this time don't be surprised that when the counting happens you will find lot of citizens lined up outside the counting centers and they will keep an eagle's eye on what is happening so it's it's not going to be easy for election commission to manipulate or do any kind of hera feri but then yes ultimately the citizen the voter is going to be the real winner this time and if the voter has made up of made up its made up his or her mind to dethrone narendra modi government i'm sure he'll be out of power one last question elections are always tough time for for a for a journalist to work it's long hours but it looks like this election a lot of independent old journalists have moved to youtube and they've used that what does it mean to collect data frame the questions and develop it in a different format and at this pace can you also talk a little bit of the hard work and the craft and what it means for a journalist to be in the youtube generating these news and information that are critical for this election see venkat uh, uh you know there are two things there is one uh, set of people who is uh, who are traveling on the ground for them it's a lot of hard work they are talking individually to people gathering the narrative speaking to them and half the times you don't get time to even have their proper meals you know sometimes i i speak to the people on the ground they say are yaar maine khana nahi khaya aaj to lunch bhi nahi hua dinner bhi nahi hua breakfast bhi nahi hua so you know it's that hectic a schedule and all this is why to get the real voices from the ground but there is another set of people who are not traveling but then who are keeping an eye on whatever prime minister is saying on whatever the opposition leaders are saying whatever voices are coming on the social media like twitter the x platforms on instagram so you have to collate all these voices and this is another hard work so whether you are on the ground or inside your studio people would think nahi ye to ek kamre mein band karke aur baith kar aap panel discussion karte ho it's not easy because you're collating you're assimilating lot of data you're assimilating those voices and then you are politically analyzing and saying whatever you have to whatever you have to on the camera so it's not an easy job and yes you rightly pointed out that all the old journalists you know uh, to which even i belong to that stream because i i've been like about uh, 23 years of television journalism and then after that i quit tv and uh, because i found it worthless uh, because uh, it's it's just no use working for a television it's more i'm happier being a, being an independent journalist rather than working for a tv channel and that's simply because you have lot of bandwidth to analyze things your own way to get the real voices there is nobody to tell you that look this is not the question you should be framing this is not the way you should have asked so you know you you enjoy your independence but yes at the same time it's challenge because at the end of the day uh, it's uh, it's your credibility is litmus test as well like i was traveling extensively for the karnataka elections last time and lot of things which we had predicted till the last moment i thought that what if if that thing goes wrong but then thankfully whatever we said and what uh, programs we had done uh, they all proved right so i just hope uh, things go well this time as well but yes it's an interesting election lots to look forward to on 4th of june but before 4th of june as well i mean uh, every day we are sweating it out you know talking to various people getting the right voices so it's a lot of hard work but yes uh, this, this entire stream of senior journalists who quit television once upon a time and now they are working as independent journalists i think they are the real heroes uh, of uh, journalism and uh, because they are getting you what you want to hear and if you look at the mainstream media that's not the voice of the people 
it's the independent journalists who are becoming the voice of the people much more than what the opposition is doing. I'm not trying to take credit being an independent journalist, but I'm telling you the opposition parties are also dependent on independent journalists. So that is the power of being an independent journalist in 21st century India. Yeah, thank you so much from Eden also. We think that all of you are doing amazing work, so this is also a video to thank all of you through you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Venkya. Thanks so, so much. Matashto Vishesha video Kalanu Nodalu, Matu Hosa video Kala Bagayti Yalu, Edina.com YouTube channel subscribe Madi, Matu bell icon click Madi.